Right here's an SST shot. This is today's SST shot, or yesterday's SST shot. So yesterday, today. Yesterday, today. Yesterday, today. Where's the water gonna be tomorrow? Guys, think about this for just a moment. Remember when you were back in school and you had the old reels of that, you know, for the movies? Y'all remember that? You young guys don't. Y'all like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Us old guys, we remember that, man. You walk in there and you see the big projector sitting there with the big reel, you're like, yes. That's movie, day, right? movie day, that's exactly right. So you take that, and, and if you pulled one of those and you looked up through it, you know, with the light behind it, you can see each individual frame, right? What you're seeing in satellite data shots is an individual frame on a movie that started a couple of million years ago. It's one frame, and it's moving that fast, okay? So what we've got to do is we've got to go back and look at day before yesterday, yesterday, today, in order to figure out where it's going to be tomorrow. Because we don't give a crap where it's at today. What we want to know is where is it going to be tomorrow. Is that not right? If you went right there to that edge today, guess what? It ain't going to be there. What you got to do is you got to figure out where it's going to be tomorrow. And the way that we do that is by backing up and going forward. <coughs> by backing up and going forward. Now I ask you again. If this is yesterday and that's today, where is it going to be tomorrow? This whole thing's pushing up to the north, isn't it? All right, so, so right here it is today, uh, yesterday. Right there it is tomorrow. You see what I'm getting at? Tomorrow it's going to be about right there. Does that make sense? All right, so one of the other tricks of the trade are the color ramps. So as you get into the, especially, specifically the SST data shots, you got to be able to use the color ramps and use them effectively. Because these color ramps, let me give you an example of bluefin tuna. Big bluefin bite here recently up off Moorhead, right? That water was 52, 53 degrees. To get a really good color separation in there, you're not going to use the same color ramp in that area as we would in the Gulf Stream in the heat of the summer when it's 85 and 90 degrees. All right, so you, you, you got to be able to change the color ramps over the course of the year. So each one of the shots that I'm about to show you are from the exact same SST shot, but it's got a different color ramp on it. Regardless of what your monitor manufacturers tell you, regardless of you know, all the, the hype in the world, there are only 256 colors that are available. They're called hex codes. If I took one individual hex code and assigned it to one-tenth of a degree of temperature, I could cover 25.6 degrees. Everybody follow that math? 256, 25.6, okay? I cheated. I stretched it to 30. So I'm covering one point whatever. My point is that you got to pick the, the color ramp for the species, the time of year, to what it is that you're looking for. So I want y'all to watch this. This is the exact same SST shot with the color ramp. So there I'm ramped between 30 and 60. Watch what happens. There's 40 and 70. 30, 60, 40, 70. 50, 80. 60, 90. 65, 85. You see what's happening though? It's all kind of moving offshore. The detail's moving offshore. If you look in here, look how beautiful you can see these temperature breaks in here. All right, now we've got temperature breaks out here too, but you can't see them very well. They're all red. But if you move up one shot, now I've got all this beautiful, beautiful uh, contrast in here, but you can't see squat back here. Does that make sense? So make sure that you use the, use the color ramps. Change the color ramp around until you get detail in the area that you're looking for. If you're hunting king mackerel in the spring, move the color ramp around until you got, you know, the, the right area with detail in it. Don't be stuck just because that's the default color ramp. And this is just all the different color ramps that we offer, which is a whole bunch. There's even one in here, uh, like 75, 95, yeah. This is for the heat of the summer. Look at that, you can't see anything. You know, it's all blank back in here. Let me show you one other little trick, too. 
Let's say that you were king mackerel fishing and you were looking for 70 degree water. Right there's your 70 degree water edge. Gee, that's kind of cool. Let's say that you're looking for 65 degree water. Right, there, right, right there's your water edge. Hmm. Hadn't thought about that, huh? Run perpendicular, not parallel. No matter what data set you're looking at, no matter what feature it is that you're trying to find, always, always, always run perpendicular to it. If you run parallel, you're liable to never find it. It's down off of Georgetown Hole. This is last night, by the way. I want you to look at the edge of that beautiful eddy. Ah. Fellow's going to run in. Let's say he gets right here to Georgetown Hole, and he starts trolling down the 300, the 300 foot line. Look, that's him right there, number one. Is he ever going to find that edge? Ever? That trolling 10 hours? You know, he might hit it late in the day, but it's going to be a while. He's probably going to call me up, cuss me out, and go, hey, you couldn't find nothing. I told you to go to Georgetown Hole and turn due south until you hit it. See, that's what we did right here in number two. And you run perpendicular to it, by golly, you will hit it. The trick is to always be perpendicular. I had another slide that, that, that in the old map where, you know, it was a really, really close one. I mean, where you miss it by a mile. This, this was the best example of it I could find. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is last night's shot from, uh, uh, from Georgetown Hole. That's Georgetown Hole right there. I bet you it was, it was probably pretty smoking. If he found that edge, it is. All right, so, so that's it for Tricks of the Trade. Do we have any questions? Fish finding from space. Yes, sir. How does the cloud cover impact all of these? Um, so any of the direct observation, the, the question was, uh, how does cloud cover affect the, the satellite coverage? Um, any of the direct observation things will be affected by cloud cover. Most of them, most <coughs> satellite data sets are affected by cloud cover. AVHRR has the best shot, but the worst cloud filter. MODIS has the best cloud filter, but not quite as good a shots as AVHR, if that makes any sense. And VIRS is about kind of right there, you know, in, in that same thing. If y'all recall, we had a wind event this past Tuesday. Before that, we'd had like six days of nothing but just solid clouds. What's really cool is also included in this is the mapping data, CCAST. And CCAST is modeled data. It's not direct observation, it's modeled. So you can go in there and you can get an SST shot or, or a, a temperature shot, uh, whether there's been clouds or not. Is it as good as direct observation? No, sir. And I, I doubt you ever will be. But in the same breath, it, it at least points you in the right direction anyway. Any other questions? Yes, sir. You will find weed lines where you find the temperature breaks and you find one body of water passing underneath the other one. Now, I have seen, I have seen some, some statements that you can see them in true color and things like that in the true color shots. I, I call horse hockey. Uh, that's right. That's right. Because what you find is, is the cooler water is going to be uh, subjugated underneath the warmer water, and it's going to wind up kind of like this. And it's that edge right there between those two data sets that are actually is where the weed line forms. And that's generally what causes them. So a lot of times, if, if you look at both the currents and the, and the temperature, when you see those good hard breaks is generally where you'll find those weed lines. Any other questions? All right, cool. Yes, sir. The SSH and the uh, uh, mixed layer depth, is that coming from the high model? Is that what you're the SSH is direct observation. Yeah, that, that is direct observation. The mixed layer depth is, is from... Uh, uh, the high model, yes sir. Mm -hmm.